for those, all of us who have pets we know and love, let's learn if we're going to see them in heaven. Some theologians have said the subject of seeing our pets in heaven is unimportant. But if you have loved a pet of any kind, this is a most important subject. And statistics say that at least 90 million American families have pets. And there is one for every personality. Some Christians have said that their pets are even a type of Christ. For pets, like Jesus, show forgiveness and unconditional love during life's most trying moments. Yet only Christ can bring salvation and forgiveness of our sins. And as to heaven, in the 14th chapter of John, Christ said that in his Father's house are many mansions. And he said, I go or leave earth to prepare a place for you. Thus Christ has been preparing heaven for us since he spoke those words over 2,000 years ago. And this is startling because Christ spoke all that was created into being in only six days. So how much more glorious and beautiful heaven must be than the universe we see? Animals, after all, played an important role in biblical history. Cattle, in the book of Jonah, wore sackcloth and ashes along with all in the city of Nineveh after their king repented and turned to God. And in the book of Numbers, there was a donkey ridden by Balaam who took money to prophesy against God. Then God sent the angel of the Lord to stop the false prophet. The donkey saw the angel. Balaam did not. And the donkey would not go past the angel. And after being abused by the prophet, spoke to Balaam, asking him why he was being beaten. And then Balaam saw the angel of the Lord, repented, and later prophesied exactly what God had told him. And in the book of Esther, horses carried men through the land to warn the Jewish population that the evil king Haman had ordered their death. And if God used animals for his purpose, how could they not be in heaven? The verses most commonly used to assure us animals will be in heaven is in Paul's book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 20 and 21. The message version of the Bible says this, quote, The created world itself can hardly wait for what's coming next. Everything in creation is being more or less held back. God reigns it in until both creation and all the creatures are ready and can be released at the same moment into the glorious times ahead. This, of course, refers to heaven. And such Christian icons as John Calvin, the late Jack Van Eppie, and J. Vernon McGee, and many others interpreted those verses that say all creation and all creatures mentioned most certainly include animals. Martin Luther, father of the Protestant Reformation, said, quote, In paradise there was complete harmony between man and animal. One day again that harmony will be restored and all creation will be made anew. New creation, man and animal, will live together in peace. In Isaiah chapter 11, verses 6 through 9, paints that same picture. It says, The wolf will lie down with the lamb, the leopard with the young goat, the calf with the young lion, and the lion will eat straw like an ox. A child will play at the cobra's hole and put her hand in the viper's den, and no harm will come to any of them. Quote, They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. And that holy mountain, most believe, is the new Jerusalem, which is the heaven that will descend to earth and be the final abode for eternity of those who know Christ as Savior. And if the Bible is to be taken literally, and I believe it is, there are already animals in heaven. 
2 Kings records the story of the great prophet Elijah going to heaven without even dying. In chapter 2, verse 11 says, quote, Suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them, Elijah and his successor Elijah. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. The King James Version in the book of Revelation uses the word beast 48 times. And in all, but a few of those verses which refer to the Antichrist, the rest designate the beast as an animal, including those gathered around God's throne in heaven. And beast in the Greek is diozoan and means a live thing that is an animal. In Revelation 4, verses 6 and 7, the Living Bible reads, quote, In the center and around the throne were four living beings, each covered with eyes front and back. The first of these living beings was like a lion. The second was like an ox. The third had a human face. And the fourth was like an eagle in flight. The 19th chapter of Revelation speaks of the final battle of Armageddon when a white horse descends from heaven carrying Jesus. And verse 14 says, And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Yes, Holy Scripture verifies animals will be and are already in heaven. Jesus, as the divine Son of God, rode into Jerusalem on the back of a lowly donkey and will return to earth on a white horse. And his living a sinless life and dying on the cross to become a living sacrifice for our sins is history's most profound act of love. And if God loves us that much, how could he not love us enough to allow his children to be in heaven with those animals they loved here on earth? Perhaps the great evangelist Billy Graham summed it up best, quote, God wants these people to be happy, and if having their animals with them in heaven makes them happy, then I suppose they will be there. Yes, the Bible is clear. There will be animals in heaven. And I believe God's love assures those will include the animals we have loved here on earth. One expert said he believes our pets are already in heaven, running and playing, awaiting our arrival when we will see them again. I can remember well every pet I had, and I am looking forward to seeing them. And if you have not already confessed Christ as your Savior, then knowing that if you do, you will be in heaven, along with the pets you know and love. And that's another reason to do so. Yes, you, like me, want to see those pets in heaven. I believe they're up there waiting for us. But to see our pets in heaven, first you have to know Christ as Savior in order to get to heaven. And if you haven't already, we can fix that right now. And of course, there's a myriad of other reasons, important reasons, why we should know Christ as Savior. Revolutionized my life. It can yours. Jesus can give you a sense of purpose. He can give you a sense of peace. He can manifest His presence and change your very life. And you can get rid of those things that beset you. Yes. Say this prayer with me. O most holy God, Lord Jesus, your word says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And yes, we want that gift of eternal life. So Lord, we believe that you are the Son of the living God, God Almighty, and the divine presence here on earth manifested as a human. So, Lord, you died and rose again so that we can be forgiven of our sins and rise to heaven with you. 
Forgive us of our sins, Lord. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord Jesus. Set us apart for your work, Lord Jesus. May we, may we become soldiers in that army of the Lord. Change our lives forever. We accept you as our Lord and Savior right now. Amen. God bless. See you next week.